so i call you to my firm and then i delegate the work to you as management okay but then the problem is that you do not have the skills of being a good manager okay but then today i'm gonna give you all those skills that you need in order to make my business profitable by being a good manager okay so we can start by defining the word management okay so i give this definition here then we can talk about it okay so what is management Man management is the effective combination and coordination of resources to achieve a specific goal my goal for you is just to achieve profit okay so i am gonna give you all the resources that you're gonna need in order to achieve that specific goal which is profit okay so this explanation here this is the explanation of general management this management here is the management that you can use that you can apply in all the industries like in any in any business you can apply this management and you you're still gonna be a good manager okay but then moving forward i called you to be a manager in my farm so you're gonna need farm management instead of just management you understand so that is why i have i have these two categories here which the first is the management that we just talked about it which is the general management and then the second one is the farm management that i'm gonna need from you okay so farm management is just the application of basic principles and scientific principles of agriculture because we're talking about farm here guys today farm business okay right so you apply the basic principles and the scientific principles of agriculture now what are the principles that i am talking about i put them here for you my friend then you know what we are talking about so to be a good farm management you just need to apply all you just need to apply these three principles okay these three principles of management which are planning implementation and control now to explain them even more so i made this diagram here so that it can be simpler for you guys so planning is just developing a plan for the farm a strategic plan as well as production plans okay based on available resources and information about external environment external environment is a is a very very good point because let's say okay let's say uh, our business is situated in an environment whereby our customers like um mangoes more than apples okay so so you as my manager you, you you're gonna have to develop a strategic plan as well as as production plans okay so your strategic plan is gonna be like this so since that our customers like um uh, mangoes more than apples so we're gonna have to to take the bigger portion of our we're gonna have to take the bigger portion of our farm and then plant more mangoes than apples because our, the, the mangoes are, are the only way that you can maximize the profit you understand then that way you have used information about external environment as well as the available resources that i have given to you as i guess i am the ceo okay then also after developing that plan you're gonna have to implement it so you're gonna have to get up from your office and then go to your staff and then tell them guys so th there's been change of plans we are gonna plant more mangoes uh than apples then your staff are not gonna argue with you they're just gonna plant those mangoes for you and then we are gonna maximize profit okay that way that is implementation now you are you are implementing okay then those plants are gonna grow obviously they're gonna grow and then they're gonna produce those mangoes that we we need then after that you sell those mangoes and then see how it went on by okay then after that you need to take control so you can just measure and record the results consider the financial records and production records then also compare performance against expected results uh, the expected results which is which is the anticipated expense like because well, obviously you drew 
uh, expenses as well as the in the income that you are expecting but then you realize that no 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 you did not meet that income that you expect that you were expecting okay so you, you so then the income that you got you you're gonna have to you're gonna have to to compare it against the plan the planned income okay then after uh, this is still under control okay then after you're gonna have to analyze and refine the plan refining the plan is just uh taking control of this is just taking control okay so you're just gonna make sure that this time is gonna go according to plan like you just this this is just a, ra a run around okay so you you go back to planning and then you implement that new plan and then you take control of it if if it is more profitable then you can also take control by maybe diversifying the business you understand yeah that is good management uh strategies okay so just apply these principles guys and then you are a good manager okay then we move guys then now i am also gonna need you to monitor the farm performance and also keep records okay but then why do i need you to monitor the farm's performance i need you to monitor the farm's performance to check production levels okay yeah th that is the reason guys yeah that, that is the reason that is the reason for monitoring the farm's performance okay but then i'm also gonna need you to keep records like after after like after you have realized that your farm did, did not did not generate the the anticipated income don't, don't don't hide that from me keep records of the of of that income that you have keep records of those losses everything that then we learn from our mistakes okay then now what records am i talking about okay i take you outside and then this is what you see guys okay so this is my farm here so these are all that you're gonna see in my farm then you're gonna have to have all these records here in order to be a good manager okay so as a good manager you need to have labor records crop records livestock records mechanization records which is the machinery and then also sales records for the shop and lastly the inventory now inventory guys if you didn't know what inventory is i uh, i also learned it at my tertiary level i didn't i didn't know what the inventory was uh, was while i while i was in high school so inventory guys is just a list okay in order for you to understand um this this inventory let me just throw something like this okay let, let me just say here we have a list okay then we have uh check marks in here we are gonna have to check we have check boxes this side okay then uh up here we wrote mangoes and then below is apples below is uh strawberries uh, so on and so on okay then if this list if this list guys it is not uh it is not complete like you did not check all this these boxes here then it is not an inventory inventory okay yeah so if this list here it is not completed like you did not check all these boxes then this we cannot say this is an inventory okay so inventory is a com is a complete list of all the the products that we sell okay so that is inventory just simple like that okay 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 then let's just move let's move to management skills all right so you you need management skills to be a good manager okay so what are the skills there there are finan financial management skills like you, you knowing how to to manage the finances like like you know in the right time to give bonuses to our labor you as well as the management you know yeah so that is that is financial management skills and also problem solving skills not only on the farm but also among employees like if problems arose from our our laborers there then you need to have a a management skill of problem solving okay and then also interpersonal and communication skills okay this is just a good way of talking to people don't just say you are the manager and then you're gonna just talk to them however you want you, you understand so that is not how it works you know you must respect people be respectful know how to communicate with them you understand be 
like be fun don't just always be serious okay don't be a control freak be a good manager whereby even even when your employees see you come in they do not become shaky you understand then also you also need to to know decision making skills already right now you know how to make decisions there and there but then in the management industry you need to so you also need to have decision making skills you understand like you do not just take a decision because uh the offer because the offer is about money no you take you take the offer because it is going to benefit the business for decades you understand then also leadership skills show leadership to your to your empl employees you understand yeah then we move then we move to forces affecting businesses then forces affecting businesses so i have two categories here of forces affecting businesses which are the internal forces as well as the external forces okay then internal forces may be the available resources for example if i did not give you enough resources for you to manage my business then it is, it is gonna be difficult for you to make the business profitable and i will have to understand there is no other way okay then another another one is the management system that is in place of the farm okay so you need to have a good management for example if you have a good relationship with your employees then that management system that you have then that means that you have a good management but it, it is not only the the communication skill okay there are many skills like if everything is just going accordingly then ah your your management skills is fabulous okay then and then on the second ca category we have the external forces and then external forces may be the economical forces for example tax guys if you're a good man manager you'd know that tax tax must not affect the business like what you can do here is that okay so you realize that our business pays a lot of tax then with that tax if if that tax well was given back to the business you would have done something better with that money but then you can play it smart by by sponsoring another business like you can just come to me and say uh man i was thinking like we can just diversify our business and open a new a new shop then our tax money is gonna sponsor that business or we can we can go to our to our local uh high schools or primary schools and then sponsor that school so there you you are a good manager if you can if you can think like that okay then another 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 force may be the legal force uh the working conditions provided to to the labor okay so if the working conditions provided to our labor are not good then we're gonna have problems like there, there's gonna be unions there fighting for them and then because we are we are just being unfair to them okay then we move to competitive forces competitive forces is just the competi the competition in the industry okay for example let's say our shop let's say our shop here does not have good packaging and then there's another shop nearby which has a good uh packaging then we're gonna lose customers because of good uh packaging you understand so you're gonna need to come back to me and they say man we need to improve our packaging then we that that way we're gonna maximize our profits okay then also there might be environmental forces affecting our business which are the natural disasters such as floods okay like imagine if flood came and then flooded our our beautiful garden here yo yo yes i'll yo, i'll be so mad okay so then now let's move to sources of risk associated with farm management okay then here also i have three types of sources of risk okay now remember that source source is where the is where the problem originates from okay so here on the first one i have technical risk which are the natural disasters uh diseases outbreak in crops uh livestock employees in employees might be like uh hiv so you, so it is imperative to to, to supply condoms to your uh, to your employees because you don't know what the, what happens behind closed doors you know so if if the the spread of hiv in in your employees then that that is a problem okay that is a risk 
because if not so then your employees you you as the manager you will be at risk of employee of losing employees you understand and then another risk is pests imagine pests ruining imagine pests ruining all this beautiful garden guys so you you're gonna need to have uh things like pesticides in order to to manage them you understand then another one is market and price risk you understand like you thinking uh because it, it is month end and then you're gonna have a lot of a lot of customers and then you inc you increase the price but then only to find out that increasing that price only chase chase away our customers so that is market and price risk guys okay then another one is financial risk like using the business as collateral to get a loan for it okay to get a loan for it in order to survive only to find out that our business is it is unable to pay back to pay back that that loan then there we are at financial risk you understand for example let's say the business it is able to pay back the loan but we have a uh, financial shortage in the business for example our employees are not get they are not getting their wages as they used to as before because of that loan you understand so that is a financial risk to the business and we don't need that in in farm management you understand yeah so that that is just like that i don't know guys if you do understand that but if you do just subscribe to this channel okay then now let's move to risk management strategies okay so let's just say maybe our risk uh, was natural disaster but if we have if if we had uh, an insurance then we, we we will be able to recover our business you understand so that is a risk management insurance is, is a very 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 good good man management strategy you understand then another one is diversification i've been talking about diversification diversification if you don't understand what diversification is diversification guys is like let's say you as let's say you as my manager you you notice that the business is doing so well and and is profiting more than expected okay so that that more money that they generate you can use it to diversify the business for example making new new other businesses like branching out the business you understand that is diversification you understand then yeah you understand then here specification specification is just uh vice versa of diversification specification is just focusing on on only one unit of business here you are fo you will be focusing on on this one uh also this one this one this one you see there there are a lot of businesses here so so this is specification you understand and then another one is value adding value adding to our to our business like if you if you make sure that our business grows value like maybe monthly or yearly then you're a good management and uh with that being said uh this brings us to the end of our lesson for today and i hope that you understand it